I'm gonna start at 30. Welcome back to the Sex Send Podcast. You are here for episode 29. Let's make it fine all the time. Whoa. You and I. <laughs> <laughs> Trying right. to rhyme. You are here with your sisters, your soul sisters, your den mothers, Lauren and Camille. If you want to find us on Instagram, our combined page is at the den mothers, and our personal endeavors can be found on our pages at she wolf lauren and at camille joanne xo so follow us for future posts updates events coaching everything you desire everything you desire today we are talking about slowing down <laughs> slowing slow down. down and sexifying your home space mm. couldn't be more important. Mm. Really couldn't be more important. Lauren and I have both gone through a phase, I think, where we're needing to sexify. I remember specifically when you moved into one of your ex's houses and you're like, oh, this can't be it. This can't be it. <laughs> and I've gone through that too. And discovering your personal style, tapping into your creativity as a divine feminine being. And a lot of that comes through decorating your space, sexifying your space. So I'm really excited to talk about that. But first, weekly updates. Well, I wanted to just say that we're so excited because we picked our first winner over on Patreon of mm. our giveaway. So if you're, if you're not familiar with that, our Patreon page has a special experience every month where we choose one of our diamond adorned wolf pack members part of the very important wolf pack mm -hmm. and you have the chance to win a two-on-one private session with camille and me so we chose our first winner we always choose it on the first mm -hmm. and that was so much fun thank you for mentioning that i almost completely forgot and it was so fun to choose it isn't someone who's been either of our clients. Right. It's a new Wolfpack member. So we're really excited. If you're listening to this and you're like, what? Fumbling around to find your Patreon. Yes, we just released a video mm -hmm. and we have our first winner. So the winner has 30 days to claim their prize and you get a two on one session. So if you want to be entered in the next raffle, find us at patreon.com slash the sex den to join our community today. That's exactly right. Yes. Okay, and then our weekly updates. Mm. Well, we had a little bit longer of a weekly update. Mm -hmm. We're recording on Monday. Normally, we, we record on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So why don't you go with your weekly update first? This week, I was sick as a dog. Dang it. Yeah. I think the last time we recorded, I was already feeling kind of strange. Mm -hmm. And then I'm pretty sure I got a bacterial sinus infection. Gross. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> it felt like my head was Jimmy Neutron going to explode all week. Dang. So my week, aka what inspired today's first topic, was a lot of slowing down. Mm -hmm. It was my body telling me I needed to slow down, telling me I needed to reflect, and I did just that. It was a lot of binging Netflix, eating delicious spicy Indian food to try and sweat out everything, Whoa. <laughs> and once a day walk with my dog because he was just hanging in there with me too. Oh, Ruby. Yeah. Why don't you tell us what you binged on Netflix? <laughs> <laughs> I became obsessed with glass blowing. <laughs> okay. What? I really like weird forms of art. I was really good at pottery when I was younger. Of course. Camille's literally yeah. good at anything. Like if she tries it, she's going to be good at it. Okay. I did not know that glass blowing is the most beautiful, intricate art form of all time. And so I watched this show on Netflix called Blown Away. There are three seasons. I watched all three seasons this week. They have 10 of the best glass blowers in the world competing with these different challenges to be the Blown Away champion. Wow. And let me tell you the craft. <laughs> 
<laughs> it actually did make me want to try glass blowing at least once, but the episode is basically they get a cool assignment like here's a culinary chef who's going to be your judge. So create a, a beautiful dish to present a platter or a plate, you know, in fine dining. And it's like chaos. They're in this really hot place. They call the glass blowing shop a hot shop, by the way. Oh. They work with these things called straight up. It's called a glory hole. <laughs> 2000 degrees Fahrenheit with fire that they're spinning the glass and blowing into it and like shaping it and forming it. And it's all this crazy stress. They have like four or five hours. And then all of a sudden they present the most beautiful things you've ever seen. You can't even wow. believe they're made out of glass. Okay. So I highly recommend this to everybody. That sounds so fun. It's actually really exciting. I did find myself, I would see what the assignment was and then I would skip till about 10 minutes left and see what they would present because it was just too exciting it was too exciting you were less into the drama more into the final presentation yeah wow. so got really sucked into that yes i did and what are you doing today or tomorrow i mean <gasps> tomorrow i'm getting tattoos, tattoos. <laughs> she's getting tattoos wow how long has it been since your last tattoo oh my gosh five years longer than that Six or seven years. Yeah. I'm getting three tattoos tomorrow. Whoa. I know. So the next episode, actually, you know what? I Well, I'm probably going to post them on my TikTok and my Instagram. Whoa. But I'll post up close on our Patreon to show what they are. I'll release them first to our Patreon members. Camille, that's so cool. Yeah. I can't wait to see them. So tap in tomorrow if you want to know. That's right. And I do have one more weekly update. I had a beautiful pleasure experience yesterday where I masturbated with my hands only. <gasps> Why? I broke away from the toy. Was that because of our last episode? Yes. Okay. So if you haven't listened to that one yet, go listen. Yeah. Lauren did such a great explanation of just really the discussion of having your own flesh on your own flesh and mm -hmm. the different, the, just being more connected to your body using your hands than when using a toy and I had sort of a sex dream but it wasn't really a sex dream I was just so horny in my dream and I I was with Lauren in my dream <laughs> and I wanted to masturbate and I'm like okay Lauren just get out of here I need to masturbate and she like popped her head back in and she's like by the way you should journal about this this was in my dream and I was like okay, thank you. And I almost had an orgasm in my dream, but in my actual body. So Whoa. when I woke up, I was like, I am so horny. I have to masturbate with my hand. It's what pussy wants. It's what pussy <laughs> wants. And it was really special. I'm telling you, like feeling her, feeling the warmth, the texture, um, I focus, I was really focused on pleasure. Wow. And it was so exciting. And I had such a beautiful orgasm. Wow. Yeah, totally psychedelic. Really just so into my body. I had my eyes closed. I was so into it. And it just felt, there was something so satisfying about it being me who created the orgasm and the pleasure mm -hmm. versus a toy. Yeah. So I might be saying goodbye to little Susie and wow. using my hands more. That's really cool. Yeah. And it took a longer time. There was a piece of me in the moment that was like, oh, no, this isn't going to be as good as a vibrator. I just had to say, you know what? Have compassion for yourself. Let's just focus on the pleasure. We'll keep focusing on the pleasure. And at first I was like, there's no way I'm going to have an orgasm. Because I haven't broken away from my vibrator in a while. And then I had a really beautiful orgasm. Wow. I'm telling you, when you focus on the pleasure of it, because I had an experience like that the other day too, where I was like kind of craving my vibrator. And mm -hmm. I was like, okay, I'm not, I don't demonize the vibrator. Mm -hmm. It's just that I've been trying to just feel my own body. Yeah. And so, um, yeah, I had an experience like that the other day too where I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm probably not going to come. Like it's taking me a mm -hmm. while. And then it was the best orgasm, like such a unique experience. 
That's so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And it, I was reading the book Pussy. I'm I'm almost done with it now, but she talks about if pussy isn't ready to come, she's not going to. She takes exactly as much time as she needs. Mm -hmm. So I just kept reminding myself of that last night of like, this isn't about coming as fast as you can. It's just about enjoying the pleasure. So right. I just kept asking like, what's feeling good? Where are you finding satisfaction? Yeah. And it felt good, everyone. Yeah, it felt wow. so good. And I have a good relationship with my pussy. I do. Yeah. Like, I, I'm really in touch with her. And, you know, I have started not wearing underwear when it doesn't feel good. You know, just exploring her more. But she was really happy yesterday. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Well, I love that. Thank you. What that a great update. Thank you. <laughs> What's my sister's update, Lauren? Well, this week has been truly fabulous for me. <gasps> I'm really feeling happy. I moved into our place that we have for the next year, <gasps> which feels really great. We got final word that our house is in fact closing in California next week so we can finally breathe. Contingencies are signed off on. It's uh, like the real deal. Our house has been in escrow. If you know anything about this, you'll empathize with me. We had to wait for our buyer's house to close before we could close. Mm -hmm. Like they had to sell before they bought our place and theirs fell out of escrow twice. And so now it's in the third escrow. And so our house has been like purchased, but not closed on mm. for three months. We were supposed to close on August 15th. So, oh my God. So that was 30 days. So anyway, what a relief. It's just a relief. Yeah. You know, it's a lot. So we're so excited for that. Um, I, yeah, I'm obsessed with our place that we just moved into. It feels it's stunning. So much better. We're recording in it right now. Yeah. We're recording in it right now. This is my closet. A beautiful background. <laughs> beautiful background. <laughs> and it's, uh, yeah, the lighting is just amazing. Shane has his workspace. I have my workspace. And then we have this huge open floor plan. And I can just dance. We literally do laps to get our steps in. And they're like, we're just having so much fun. So it's beautiful. A little private pool. We just love it. And we're so happy. Molly's so happy here. We can walk her off the leash. We're, I'm meeting so many new people. It just feels really good. And I'm excited for the next two weeks because I'm going to my first Zogchen Empowerment, <gasps> which I'm so, so excited about. That is in San Francisco. And sorry, I keep running into the, um, that's in San Francisco. So I will be there this week. And then I have a bunch of friends coming in for my 30th birthday. <gasps> yeah. So Camille and I just realized today, I was like, wait a second, is our 30th episode coming out next week? Sure enough, it is, and it's my 30th birthday week. So, oh, what of course. weird timing. Of course. That always happens for us. Yeah, it's just so cool. So, I feel like that's just a nice little synchronicity that I'm into. And, yeah, so I'm feeling really good. Me too. You're turning 30. That's wild. Yeah, this is my last. Well, no, next episode we'll record. I'll be 29 too. But, yeah, so I'm kind of coming into the next couple of weeks just – reflecting on a decade, you know, reflecting on my twenties. It's kind of a wild thing. Like you get, I, I don't, I've been having a lot more just, um, intentional or introspective time with myself. Mm -hmm. I'm like, wow, it really is amazing. And I know it seems so obvious, but it's like the older you get, you, you know, you're aging toward death. Like aging mm -hmm. is toward death. And mm -hmm. I've been kind of obsessed with death lately in a healthy way, you mm -hmm. know, just thinking about it and contemplating it. And I'm going into a new decade and I'm taking it seriously and joyfully and just, you know, reflecting on my 20s, which was really an incredible period of my life. It's a really big deal. Yeah. So I'm excited. It's a big deal. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Those birthdays where it's the zero, like you're kind of entering these new realms. Yeah. And your 30s is big. Yeah. It feels like you sort of start to have it figured out. Your 20s are just really scrambled, figuring it out, getting out of college, getting your first job, trying to 
find a partner. I, I don't know. It feels yeah. like a lot of hustle and bustle and 30s feels like an exhale. Yeah. It feels great. I, I'm really excited. 29 has been a lot of loops closing, I would mm -hmm. say. Like, yeah, just a lot of loops closing is the way that I would describe it. So anyway. we'll talk about it next time and I'll urge you to, to yeah, say we'll some pieces of advice for, for people 20s. in their twenties. Yeah. yeah. That's exciting. So cool. Yeah. So the reason that we chose this topic today of slowing down is because I was really sick this week and it encouraged me to slow down and reflect on my last month which was really my first month being fully single and alone since my divorce. Mm. I was living with family members for the last five months. Yeah. So to just be alone. And also I think this concept is, is more than just this last month for me, but it's been such an eye opening experience in the past year for me. And I know for you too, you're probably a couple years now into this idea of slowing down and what that even means, what that means in the context of our society and what that means in terms of tapping into our true nature, really, hmm. in terms of slowing down. So, I mean, I guess I'll just kind of kick this off <laughs> unless you have something to say too. Yeah. Well, I just think it's important for everybody to just take a minute to note what slowing down would feel like to you mm -hmm. right now in your life. Like when we say slow down, how could you apply that? You know, is it in work? Is it in constantly trying to get to a goal? Mm -hmm. Is it in like future based living like you're constantly waiting for this to be over and that to be over um is it in sex you know like mm. having sex with the goal of you come i come cool it's over mm. um you know just what does it mean to you yeah. so if you are at home right now or you just want to make a mental note of it maybe just the theme for the week can be where can i slow down where can you slow down? Yeah, we'll so. give that as a journal prompt to the yeah. wolf pack. Mm -hmm. Where can I slow down? And I know we've said that before. For me, this concept really started to emerge as I shifted away from engineering into this more entrepreneurial lifestyle. And what I started to notice is that a lot of corporate jobs, you're always going to the next goal, whether it's finishing a project or getting the next promotion or working up the ladder, it's a, or waiting for the next vacation, right? It's a lot of wishing, wanting, desiring. And for me, that has also started seeping into this new entrepreneurial lifestyle. And what I reflected on this week when my body was like, hey, here's the sickness so you can reflect on your last month. It's that when we're in that phase of wanting, desiring, needing something else, needing to change locations, um, just hustling to get to the next, clawing at anything to get to the next place, we are completely missing what's going on in the present moment. Mm -hmm. And we only notice that when we take a minute to slow down and look back at what's happened in the past couple days, months, even years. And I think that this is what happens to people when they get to that midlife crisis mm -hmm. moment, right? You're like in your 40s and 50s and you look back and you're like, holy shit, what happened? And it's because that rushing and doing, doing, doing is pulling us out of the being. Mm -hmm. And it's, al it's not allowing us to fully seep into the present. And to me, that's when we have the most regret. Yeah. Yeah. I think that it, 
I always say this to my clients. It's like, what will leave you on your deathbed with regret? And it's Mm. because it's important. You know, we live in a life where it's like, no regrets, no this, no that. But it's like, I, I don't have regret for a lot of the things that I've done in the past couple of years as a more like embodied being, like Mm -hmm. as somebody who said, okay, this might be a little bit wild, but I have to say this because my body is making me, you you know, like, because Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm called to say this and it's had some difficult repercussions, but it's like, I don't regret that because it was like, I didn't have a choice at the time Mm. versus when I look back, I think I've mentioned this before, but I have a period of my life where when I think of it, it feels like heartbreak. And it was during my grad school time Mm. because at that time and you know, regret's a kind of hard word. I just look back and I feel like intense and deep nostalgia. Mm. Not the kind where it's like, oh, that was so sweet. But the kind where it's like, oh, like it hurts because I know that I could have been there more for it. Mm. It's like one of those tough lessons. Yeah. And, And what it was is I was just obsessed with this guy who did not deserve me to be obsessed with him Mm. like it was a really hard period and that period in particular was like here I am as this young woman in her 20s achieving a master's degree writing researching traveling I went on a study abroad for five weeks with my closest friends and I don't even remember it really Mm. like I can't even tell you what the timeline was really where we were like a couple places stick out but it was like I was constantly thinking about this dude Mm. and like this, will we be together? Is it going to be okay? Like obsessing over him, totally focused on this goal of like, hurry up. I need to speed up and get through this trip so that I can get back to that. Mm. And I look back on that time in my life and I'm like, I wish that I had just been there for it. Mm. And so that was my, greatest lesson at that time that I share now because it's like if I could prevent you from feeling that like having these amazing trips or having times with friends and family that you can really be there for then uh yeah that's that's why I share that story yeah no I feel like so many people can relate to that because they're To me, every at least person I've met has that relationship where they're longing for the person, like changing their schedules around for them and missing out on other events to save room for them. And really in that you're living in such a future state that, again, you're just completely missing your present moment. And what I want to say, too, is even if your present moment feels really hard, Even if you're in a shit show of your life right now, you're super heartbroken or you've just lost everything or a parent, a grandparent, something is getting, you know, has sick or you've lost someone close to you. Those moments of heartbreak, sadness, frustration, anger, you also need to be in that too, because those so many deep lessons are built in that period. And we're always trying so hard to get out of that as fast as we can. And I think the more we can just slow down and be in those moments is really when we can process that pain and the Mm -hmm. emotion. Yeah. And we live in a, like we live in a compulsory world where instead of slowing down, we pack our schedules with more Mm. and we'll say like, oh, I'm an extrovert. So, you know, I'm, Mm. I'm just constantly loving the hustle and bustle. And I'm not saying that there's anything necessarily wrong with periods of your life that are full Mm -hmm. because, you know, the more we clear shit out of our bodies, the more we space we have to receive more friendships, more money, more, you know, vacation, more travel, like whatever it is. And I'm not saying not to do that, but what we're saying is slowing down and just noticing in your life where you might be trying to like ramp up, like trying to fill your space Mm. with goals and, and like orientation based activities. 
days. Mm. Like, okay, I can be happy when I sell the house. I can be happy when I'm finally like free of all of my debt. I can be happy when I finally meet the man of my dreams or when we when go I get the from, promotion when I get the promotion or mm. when we go from boyfriend to engaged or mm. when we finally get married. And it's like having these markers on your life of when you're going to be able to enjoy your life, mm. you know, mm-hmm. like that's really what slowing down means to me is mm. being able to notice the journey is the journey while I'm in the journey. Mm. it's not like this future experience where it's like, okay, I'm going to get there and then I'll be happy. It's being here and being happy in the process of getting there. If that makes sense. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? That makes so much sense. I want to give another example actually of this because I feel like I just finally, this lesson for me has finally like it is my being I've been working on it for years Mm. but I have been really good at being present for a while now like even in really tremendous discomfort I've been pretty fucking good at being in it Mm -hmm. like okay here I am in this discomfort but when we went to sell the house which Mm. is like you know a stressful experience We decided very quickly to sell it. And all of a sudden I was so wrapped up in like, oh my God, we have to get mulch and pebbles and like do all of this huge list of things. And I was so obsessed with when is this going to be over? Like, I just want the house to be sold and for it to be over. Mm -hmm. And I was sitting in the bathtub one day. We had our friend Jordan was over Shane and Jordan were talking out in the living room. And I remember I was just in the bathtub and it was like, what do I need to kill right now? Like, what is this discomfort inside of me? Cause here I am in my bathtub in this beautiful house that I wasn't like, I didn't hate the house. I wasn't no, unhappy was in the house. It was just, I knew we needed to move on. And I was just sitting in the bathtub, like, you, I literally was talking out loud to myself, you are not doing this to yourself. Mm. You are going to savor these moments where you need to go to Home Depot at all hours and like get these things to fix the house. You're going to savor the conversations that you have with the contractor. Mm. You're going to savor every fucking breakfast, lunch, and dinner in this home with Shane because on the day that you're moving out, And on the day that this house is closing, you're going to be sobbing. Yeah. And it's going to be over. It's going to be over. And so just can you be here, Lauren? And I like really had this thing in my head that moving is stressful. You have to be stressed out, you know, like Mm. that kind of a narrative. Just like people will say to you when you're having a kid or when you're planning a wedding, like it has to be stressful. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. You can slow down and just be in the chaos of it if it has to be chaos, but you can be there for it. And so anyway. I really love that example because you can feel you move the stress of moving. Anybody can relate to that. And you're like, it's never going to get done. And then you get done and you're like walking away from the house and it's like, oh my God. Mm Mm-hmm. It's over. So you're like, what are those moments going to feel like? Mm -hmm. Are you going to be looking back thinking, wow, I really wasted my last two weeks there so stressed or it all got done anyways, like I knew it would. And I got to savor these last moments. Yeah. And that's, that's the point that I just want to lead up to is all of this is happening anyway. Mm -hmm. Like, it, you've never heard of a story before where a person's like, yep, and then my lease was over and I just ended up not leaving because I couldn't get my shit out of there. It's like, no, <laughs> the stuff got moved out. The baby was born, even though you The wedding so, was had. The, the wedding <laughs> happened. Like everything was exactly as it should be. And you ruined it for yourself. (laughs) Like you have to take the responsibility. And so that's part of the slowing down process is realizing that you are not a victim of speed. You are the perpetrator of it. Mm. You're the one 
doing this to yourself and it's not your fault. We're, mm-hmm. we're constantly, 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 uh, what is that called? When you're, uh, you're constantly, uh, when it's like driven into you. Do you know what I mean? Mm-mm. Um, yes. I bet the wolf pack is going to say, I know the word you're talking about. Conditioned. We're conditioned. We're constantly conditioned for speed. If you think about it. Okay, yeah, we are. Everybody line up. The bell's going to ring. It's a very militant kind of mm. experience. Mm-hmm. Like this needs to be done at this time. We're a deadline driven society. Yeah. It's not like when you're at work, you can just be like, okay, I'm feeling into this no, project. That's very Western. It, yeah. yeah. So it's more, yeah. So it's a, the process of speeding up, being ready on time, getting there, accomplishing this many things in a day, making lists, checking them off. Um. It's okay. just in us. It's Yeah, but it's in us only in Western culture, too. A lot of other places, like I'm thinking of Italy who, or even France or mm-hmm. anywhere where they have this period during lunch where they go have a couple glasses of wine. Whoa. They forget. They don't talk about work. They just really enjoy it. Or in Italy, they have that. Passagiata. Passagiata, yeah, where they eat, take a nap, and then go back to work. They enjoy the day they enjoy the moment it's interesting if you travel and this is why i do think traveling is so important because you realize that in other places people do not live to work they just work to live yeah i don't know i would argue that with globalization that it's getting worse everywhere in the world i don't really think that there's anywhere at this point that isn't touched by Western ideals of speed and accomplishment. Like Mm. maybe that was the truth like 20 20 years years ago. ago. Yeah. And I'm sure that it's not as bad in other places, but like all of these big European companies are in bed with U S companies or in bed with China, you know, like everybody is feeling the impact of like produce more, have a bigger following, like do more with your life except for just be depressed. Okay. Well, that makes me sad then. I I do feel that way. And obviously I don't think that it's like as, it's probably not as bad. I haven't been to Europe for a while. Me either. Um, But I just feel like with globalization, it's not like globally people are slowing down. Mm, I feel like. No, that's that's true. It is ramping up every, okay. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's hard. To, because where we are right now, everything feels so slow. Oh, yeah. For us. But then if you imagine, like, you know, we're in Tulum right now. And that, yeah, I guess the people around who are building everything up are probably feeling like, oh, my God, things have never been, been more busier. Busy. Yeah. It feel like it could feel different because... It's like relax in the jungle and stuff. But if you actually think about the people who are like building the whole city, they're working literally six days a week, nine hour days with maybe like a 30 minute lunch break. Okay. I'm hating this all of a sudden. Yeah. So this is an important episode for everybody feels like. <laughs> so everybody needs to slow down. We're going to actually if slow down right now. And I'm just, recognizing my privilege more and more yeah. as I'm saying this. And that isn't just an important thing. We, You know, we could have said that at the very beginning. It's just like, it's one of those things that we say all the time. Like, if you have the privilege to heal, you must. If you have the privilege to slow down, you must. Because coming back to your joy, it's almost like with colonialization and with you know, like being born into more and more money or making more and more money. It's like you get to this certain point where it's like, holy fuck, I'm so unhappy and I'm doing this to myself. If you get there, number one, good for you. You're safe. You have food and shelter Mm -hmm. and like good for you. Stability. And now you have to unlearn so much of the stuff that you're currently doing that's bringing you back into this place of hellhole. What do you say? Yes. Slow down and unlearn. Yeah. Slow down and unlearn. And that's really what healing is. 
Like we think that healing is doing more of something. Yeah. I my clients are constantly like, okay, but what do I do? Yes. Like my coaching style is so much being and so much less doing Me that too. it's like I'm not the person that's going to give you a million different journal prompts and all these different activities and have you be touching your head, your shoulders, your knees, and your toes. It's like how much can you be alive? Oh yeah, like yeah, and. and some of my clients, I force to sit in silence and quiet. I Almost all of them because I'm starting them on a breath work and meditation practice. But some, I'm like, you're not getting homework this week. Yeah. Your only homework is to become more conscious of your breath. Like sit in your bed for five minutes in silence when you wake up and hold your belly and bring breath into your body. You mm-hmm. know, it's like I, I ask my clients first session, what does your schedule look like? And I'm like, you're doing too much. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and almost everybody these days is. Yeah. Because what we do is we do too much to convince ourselves that we're worthy of love. It's like, if I achieve, then mm. that dad who wasn't there might love me. If I achieve, then I'm proving to myself that I'm worthy of that hot guy at the bar. Mm. If I achieve, achieve, achieve X, Y, Z. And so we're constantly doing more, having 5,000 projects so that we don't have to do this slow down work. Mm. And in the slow down and in the receive and in the exhale is the awakening that everybody wants. That's yes. what, that's what you actually truly desire. And so yeah. there's, oh shit, I, I had a piece there that I wanted to, to discuss about the slowing down the being. It'll pop back up. Okay. It'll pop back up. But it was what I felt to be an important point. Slowing down, receive the the coaching, the awakening. Yeah, I guess I guess what I wanted to point at in, in other words, I think I know the kind of concept is like Notice in yourself why you're doing so much and if it's feeling good. Like, notice what is it for? What are you doing everything for? Mm. Because we kind of get stuck in these unconscious actions where it's just like all of a sudden you have all these different things that you're doing and we don't know why. Like you have to pause in order to even know why you're doing all the things that you're doing. Yeah. Like I remember at one time I literally had like six different jobs that I was doing and I just could not get organized on my business. And it's like, yeah, I was literally doing property management, working for mom, like managing finances. I mean, like, why are you doing all this? Yeah. So it's like, What are you doing it for? Are you trying to validate that you're worthy? Are you trying to validate that you're worthy of love? That you are deserving of something? Mm. That, you know, what is it? What is it? And so getting to the root of that may help you to slow down too. Because once you notice that you're worthy of love, whether or not you lay in your bed for the next 10 years or you become the next Kim Kardashian, you know, you're mm-hmm. worthy of love either of those ways. Yeah. Worthy of love right now if you're taking a big dump listening to our podcast. <laughs> <laughs> if you're sitting hunched over your bowl of ice cream thinking, this is good stuff. Yeah, this is good stuff. <laughs> so speaking of being hunched over in your home, this yeah. is a good segue into... <laughs> If you are currently hunched in your home, why and you're you... looking around thinking, I fucking hate this place. <laughs> These plastic bowls are the worst. <laughs> then it, this episode is turning the corner and it is for you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What I have noticed is, okay, a lot of my clients are trying to bring in this new energy into their life. Okay. Right? They're like, I just, I don't feel sexy. Mm-hmm. You know, I, and I'm like, well, 
turn your camera around. Let me see your room. And I'm like, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> That is what it's like sometimes. But I'm actually... Not with judgment, (laughs) but just because we're so concerned. (laughs) It is really hard, at least for me, to think about being sexy, bringing in these beautiful rituals into my life, and being surrounded by stuff that I don't like. Let's take, yeah, and let's take it back a notch. Some of us aren't taught how to create, like, an altar space. Mm. And just, like, our moms weren't big into aesthetics, maybe, and it was much more utilitarian. Like, you've got your forks, you've got your bowls, you've got your knives, and you're kind of surviving. Like, mm-hmm. that that's a real thing. Mm-hmm. Um, And so some of us just aren't taught that, being in the presence of things that make you feel alive is really important. Like when you think of a movie, for example, like let's think of a movie that really lights you up. The reason that that movie lights you up is because for obvious reasons, right? It's like, okay, I love the music. I love the artistry. I love the costumes, for example, wardrobe. I love the makeup. I Mm. love the, you know, the setting. Mm -hmm. We are homo narrans we're storytellers uh-huh. by nature and so part of a story is the beauty of it and the excitement and when you're listening to a story you hear you want to listen to the context at least i do i'm like where were you was it a paved road or a dirt road were there flowers or was it dusty like was it more of a desert scene and this is probably also because i'm a libra yeah we're very aesthetically focused <laughs> okay. um but i'm just Pisces, saying i'm like yeah. <laughs> but Very what, healing ways. But what I'm saying is that a good story gives you all of that. Mm. And a good story, good stories equal a good life. Yeah. And so I'm making the connection there between con- thinking of your home like the set of your life. Mm. It's the set. It's the setting. It's the context. If you wake up every morning and you're like, yeah, okay, great. I'm just getting to school and I've got like toothpaste on my mirror and stuff. Not that you have to be a neat freak, but just see if you can pay attention to certain areas in your house where it's like, okay, that place has amassed a lot of clutter or Mm. all I'm looking at over there is a shitload of cords and like my cereal boxes are visible on top of my fridge. It's like, what do you want to see when you wake up? What do you want to see when you go to bed? What do you want to see when you're being fucked? Whoa. You know? No, that's so true. And also, I want to put this into context of it doesn't have to be expensive. I'm not saying this from a perspective of, like, you need to have nice things. I'm just putting it into perspective. I think a lot of the time we'll just put stuff in the house because we have it or we've had it before. Or I'm thinking about even in our closets, right? Like. We own these things because we're like, well, I could fit into that. Or I'm just remembering how freeing of an experience it was for me to go through my closet a million times, even if I only had six pieces of clothing left and be like, this is out of style. This I always hate when I wear it. Yeah. And and just really cutting back on the bullshit Mm -hmm. in my life and in my space, you know? Going through my kitchen and being like, I never use this fork because I hate how it feels, but I like this one. So Mm -hmm. keeping that one and just really minimizing and making an experience that so that everything you're touching feels good to you. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah. And you can also collecting things from outside. Like we all pass stuff that we see without saying like your neighbor's stuff. (laughs) But you're walking around and you're like, that is such a beautiful flower. Like, for some reason, that stick looks really cool. I don't know. And just picking it up and bringing it into our house and creating a little space of earth elements that you love. Yeah. It doesn't have to be you going to spend your savings on new things. But just how can you remove stuff that you don't think is aesthetically pleasing and just bringing stuff in that makes you feel happy and... Mm -hmm. yeah creating a home that feels really good to you 
is really similar to having a style that feels good for you. Um, having like making food that tastes good, mm-hmm. having art around music that you like, those things are really important. It, it, it really is because it sets the mood for your life. And so, no, I don't think that you need to go out and spend all of your savings, but you can spend some of it. It doesn't have to be like you're replacing a bunch of stuff, um, but you can get new sheets. If you can afford mm-hmm. to buy you and all your friends drinks, you can afford to get new sheets that feel really good or a mattress topper that feels amazing or some soy based candles with essential oils that smell really good. Like Mm -hmm. you can prioritize it. I also think it's really great to say that thrifting for cool household items is it's all the rage. It's all the rage. (laughs) Yeah. It's all the rage. I remember when I moved to San Diego alone for the first time and mom flew in and took me to the thrift store and we furnished my entire place, not my mattress. That's something I would buy <laughs> unused. Yeah. Um, but just finding cups and bowls and cute little things to put on your shelves and stuff for like 50 cents. There, there's even like a half off day at thrift stores. Yeah. I mean, it really doesn't have to be a lot. Yeah, they've got to get rid of their stuff. Yeah. They've got more coming in tomorrow. And what else is free is Pinterest, where you oh, yeah. can build a vision of what you like to see. Like for me, tapping into my style and creativity like that is actually a little bit difficult. It's not something I care about that much, but I do like to go on Pinterest and kind of get ideas for stuff that makes me feel happy. Mm -hmm. You know, I I think that's important because sometimes if, if a lot of our creative side has been shut off for a long time, we've always said like, oh, I'm just not creative. I'm really good at math. I'm really good at this. We can we tend to think that that part of us just doesn't exist. Mm -hmm. But really what we need is some inspiration. So for me, that comes a lot from scrolling on my Pinterest board, seeing what I like, seeing what draws my eye to it and going towards stuff like that. Mm -hmm. I need that kind of help right now tapping in. And also it should be said that this sexifying your space and your style and stuff is really a divine feminine quality. Mm -hmm. That is creativity. Yeah. People will say, oh, I'm not creative at all. And I look at their house and it's like, "You're, of course you do. Look at your space. I know. I have a client right now and I just asked her the other day. I'm like, what is your creative practice? And she's like, I don't really have one. And she's like, but, you know, I did design. She has this, like, gorgeous home in Los Angeles and literally redid the whole thing, made this, like, incredible closet for herself that's her dressing closet she has all this fashion and i'm like oh my god this is so creative You're like, it's like clear that you yes. can claim it it's fun yeah creativity comes in so many different forms so i'm just all about i mean i used to love diy projects that i would find on pinterest and then i would go to the fabric store and stuff and like make the things by myself that i really liked i've done that too with furniture like Remember those really cool pieces that I had in Ocean Beach? I remember the black with the cool blue and yellow cool candles. What? It was an armoire. Okay, but it wasn't black. It wasn't? Nope, it was brown. Okay. And it was the coolest thing that I ever owned. With the the little, you changed out the knobs. Yes. And I sold that when I was moving back from Texas. (gasps) And it broke my damn heart. What a disaster. I know. I know. Um, So anyway, I actually wrote a whole black. I wrote a blog blog called sexify your space how to sexify your space so we'll link that but a lot of it involves decluttering Mm. getting rid of things that no longer serve you Mm -hmm. it's just we've got to do it you've got to do it I we have to we have to yeah so just get rid of stuff that doesn't serve you. Yeah. yeah. I, I read a really beautiful article written by my best friend's friend, actually, mm-hmm. about um, the reason, like, the freeing nature of giving, get, getting rid of all of her clothes and just the identity of, you know, body consciousness and just tapping into your new size and getting rid of all those things and what it does for opening up space for more compassion and acceptance for yourself. So oh, that's a good. I think yeah, I've just really loved the idea of that for our closet. Mm. 
Yeah, if we're talking about closets, I have more to say. If you pick something up and, well, first, let me just say this. I like to have minimal but very high quality items. I like Mm -hmm. a $400 pair of boots if I'm going to wear them every day. Yes, you do. That is my thing. So I'm just going to be clear about that. Like, I love the feeling of things. Like, if I close my eyes and I feel it and I don't like it, I won't get it. But you also barely have any clothes. I have barely any clothes. And for me, I learned about that when I did van life because I realized how freeing it was. I can go in my closet and pick out any two or three things, like a scarf, a tank top, and a cute skirt or something. And I just, I always look good. I look put together all Mm -hmm. the time because all my clothes are my favorite things. Mm -hmm. So I'm never panicking or trying to think about, and you know, this is different for everybody, but it's like, I just know that if I am in a rush or if I'm going to the gym, like I just have my staple items and that's all I need. And then I add jewelry on top of it. Mm. So that's for me what I liked because the minimalist thing just works for me. But for other people, that's not their thing. So you just have to find what works for you. Yeah. A couple of high quality items versus all of these things. A big thing for me in this realm was that Things in my house and things in my closet had emotional value to me. Okay, yeah. So Lauren actually recommended this to me and I started doing it. I would take a picture of that clothing item or the thing in my house that I was getting rid of and then I would donate it. And I actually, this just happened to me yesterday. I was randomly looking through my photos and saw a picture of these pants and I was like, oh. Yeah. I gave those away. I like I specifically gave those away, but I took a picture before and there were a lot of memories in those. Yeah. Like I, I loved those. They were so cozy. I wore them all the time. And I'm like, which pants? They were actually a pair of pants that was yours first. Oh drums. <laughs> they were navy blue and they had a little pink ribbon. Shut the front door. Yeah. I got those so many years ago. I had those pants so long. And then Lauren gave them to me when I went to college. I think you moved out and I had them and I went to college with them. Yeah, dude, I had those pants for like 15 years. Yes. And so I had to get rid of them. They were so long. I never wore them next to my other new jammies. So (laughs) I just took a photo and it's like, that is just, there you go. The memory is captured. Now it's forever. I have the memory forever. I don't have to keep lugging this thing around with me every new place I go because I'm like, well, the memories, you know. I just have a photo and I can get rid of it. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. So I highly recommend that. Me too. Okay, folks. Oh, I wanted to mention one more thing about sexifying your space. Oh, um, two more things, actually. The first is if you live with your parents or you live with a partner that has their own style or you're, you know, you have roommates or something and you can't do the whole space, like let's say that you have an accumulation of other people's stuff, mm. you're splitting the cost of furniture, you know, just anything. I, I've, I've had so many different mm-hmm. living situations. You can create a space in your room or a space within your space that feels really good for you. Like if you have a private bathroom, for example, get some candles in there, get some more, some Mm -hmm. softer light bulbs, get some colored light bulbs. I love red for Mm -hmm. nighttime. I know you might some people who are, but, um, you know, just having mood lighting in a place that feels good for you or creating a little altar, like getting a special table, having some kind of a cover for it like a scarf or a tablecloth Mm -hmm. or something that just feels right to you having some candles on there an incense holder some crystals some water Mm -hmm. like a little cup of water for you know an offering to the moon and just having a space within your space that feels nourishing and fabulous to you yeah, is a point. so important. It can be yeah. something so small. It doesn't have to be like you're redoing your whole house. Mm-mm. It just needs to be an intentional space for you that feels good. That's such a good point. I even travel with it. I know you do too, mm-hmm. but I travel with an altar and there are things that I've accumulated. Most of them, which I haven't even purchased. Like I went to have this really special beach day and I'm like, I need to collect a couple shells from today. I just know I'm feeling that type of energy. 
went and collected a couple like little treasures that I found and I keep that there. My mom gave me these weird stars when I was going to college that are like basically a Christmas element, but you can <laughs> hang them, but I just feel like they're so cool. So I keep those and I kind of put it around and I always find when I go into a new place, a little table that perfectly matches what I want. And I put my little stuff there. I feel like we should upload pictures of our altars on Patreon if you're I okay with that. <laughs> You can do it. No, I won't do it. I I feel like my space is just totally for me. I'm not. It's just too I'm sacred. Not a, yeah, I don't share my partner's space. Okay, well you can look some up on Pinterest. <laughs> now I'm nervous about sharing mine. I'm no, not gonna do it. You can. <laughs> you can totally do it. I just and that's no. up. That's up to anybody in particular. You know, like I would. I could create one that isn't my actual one and upload it. But I just my altar is so. Okay, I think that's beautiful. <laughs> so I'm like, I won't do it. <laughs> I won't do it. No, I'm not going to do it. Okay, yeah. so earth elements. Uh, my favorite thing from Kimmy, our stepmom, was that she told me when I go outside and I'm having a day, if I look at something and it captures my eye just to take it. Mm -hmm. So like even a leaf. Yeah. A little stick. Mm -hmm. You know, like a little pebble. It doesn't matter. Just something that... The other day I was changing my bed sheets and this perfect really tiny seashell Aww. just like flew onto the sheet and I'm like okay that is so <laughs> weird I have to keep this Aww. yeah so just put it on my little altar you know just yeah. something that makes you feel good yeah I usually pick up things from a place that I'm in and then when I'm leaving it's the hardest thing to do but I put them back or else I would just have a huge traveling altar I, mean, mm. I had to leave so much stuff in my storage unit that just makes me feel so sad oh yeah you did. but like you know picking up little pine cones or things that just mm. that i love or yeah I, I literally had this very mossy i love moss this very mossy piece of bark from northern california and i'm like i can't i mean i you could can't travel with your moss but bark. i just put the moss bark you know Back, back to the earth. Yeah, back to the earth. And it's a nice practice, too, of letting go. It's kind of like my mandala practice, where it's like, I gather it, it's so sacred to me, and then I also let it go. Yeah, that's, that is tough. It's tough. Yeah. But anyway, it's important. Um, I think that's it. I had that one other thing to say just about lighting. I think light just creates such a mood. There are really cool little lights on Amazon. Like, you can do the little string lights in your place. You can have the lights that are different colors. Like, what are those things called? They're like galaxy sky lights. Yeah, like skylights. Galaxy lamps, basically. And it's like the... You know, yeah, it looks like stars on the ceiling. It looks like stars on the ceiling. That's fun. Those are actually fun. I'm just giving a lot of different ideas for kind of mood enhancers. Yeah, even just keeping a cute little lamp on instead of the ceiling light. Yeah, if you're rocking fluorescence, I know it's kind of like a cool thing these days to just have cords in your computer and fluorescent lights, kind of like Emma Chamberlain style, you know? Yeah. You know what I mean? Where it's sort of like, which is also cool. If that's your aesthetic, then great. But if it's not your aesthetic and that's just how you're living, then maybe time to switch it up. Time to switch it up. Try something new. Yeah. Okay, that's it, folks. Yeah, that's it. We'll be doing questions on our Patreon page. Yeah, we always do. We have already four videos up there. More content than that, but specifically four long Q&A videos. So if you're craving more of us, patreon.com slash the sexton to join our VIP community and get exciting new videos every week of fun Q&As. They're a little raunchy. They're more raunchy and we're able to just dive deeper into them. Mm -hmm. Basically, they're mini episodes. Yeah, it is. Yeah. They are mini episodes because they're like 20, 25 minutes long of yeah. us talking and we talk about personal stuff. We go totally. into more details. Yeah. So find us there. If you are interested in following our personal endeavors, She Will Florin is Lauren on Instagram. SheWillFlorin.com is her website. I am Camille Joanne XO on Instagram and HealWithCamille.com. Yay. Find Thank you. Here. We love you all and we'll see you next week.